guys, this video is how to make a dish towel holder that you can usually put over the handle of your stove. This is the sample one I made up using a pretty big ring. I think this ended up being like five inches in diameter. And again, it has just a cute little button that I did. And this was all done in crochet. So I'm gonna show you a very simple design. This would be great for like a little like gift for Christmas or just something even for around the house. The design we're gonna do isn't gonna be exactly the same one. This is just gonna be the idea. Now this hook is about, I think, three inches in diameter. I got these at Joann Fabrics online when they had clearance. And so I had gotten a bunch of the three inch ones and a bunch of the four, or the five inch, I believe. And these, this size I've used for the Christmas wreaths video that you've seen. And we're going to use that same idea of how to make the dishcloth holders as well. So you'll need some sort of ring, either plastic or metal, a crochet hook, some yarn, and later on you will need some sort of button to use to um, close it off. Because again, the way the dish holder thing goes is you'll have a strap here. This will go up through the handle and come around and then simply hook onto there and then you put your towel through. So what you need to do first <clears throat> And let's zoom in here. Let's get in position. The first thing we need to do is do a single crochet around our metal ring or plastic ring that we're using. This is just going to cover this whole outside. I'm just doing my little slip knot thing here. Putting it on my crochet hook. Tighten it. You can hide this string as you work around the project as well. So put your hook. I haven't done this in a while, so please bear with me. And you got your hook behind it and get your yarn. So you come through oops, and go back and grab the yarn behind it and bring it up. Wrap around. Go down. Bring it up. Wrap around. Bring it all the way through. Now you're going to want this pretty tight too. Again, you don't want to end up seeing any of your ring. So again, all you're going to do is work single crochet for the first time going all the way around the ring. And you can kind of see as you go, keep pushing them together. Again, we're trying to get it as snug as we can so that we don't have, if we don't do it snug, you're going to end up seeing it. See how if I separate it, you can see the gaps. You don't want that. So you want to kind of keep pushing it together so that you know. And again, I didn't end up working the string with it. I can end up doing that at a later time. If you want to see how to work the string, we can do that at a later time. We can hide that in another way as well. Okay, so then I'm just going to keep going around it. Oops, sorry. The yarn is behind the loom, or behind the hook, or excuse me, behind the ring, as you can see, and the hook is in front, and it's going in to get it, so it looks like this, and then you rewrap it, and you're going to bring it through. So that's all I'm going to do, working all the way around the ring. Again, as you go, just simply keep kind of pushing them snugger. And also, you'll see a ridge. See how we got the ridge right here in the single crochet? Make sure that's all kind of going the same way because it will twist and turn as you're doing it. And unless you want twisting and turning, just kind of keep an eye on it that it's all the same way because that's going to be important when we get around to the other side. So I'm going to keep working my single crochet until I get back to the beginning. Okay, we're getting back to the beginning. As you see, I kept it as snug as I could going around. And you can still see our starter one. It's almost good to leave the straggle there until you get back to the beginning. Just because later on when we add the um, extra piece for that, we'll kind of know where we want to like maybe center it if you want to. Or you can hide it simply by going down as you're doing your crochet. You would kind of use it as part of the yarn you're going around. So I'm going to finish up here. And if you hear any weird noise in the background, I have like certain kind of nuts falling off a tree. So if you hear me scream or something or jump, yeah, it's because they've been scaring me all day. So any hoo hoo. Let's get back to this, going around. Now once you get back to the beginning, you say I still need to do a couple more because again, I'm pushing them down so I can see how tight it is around. It looks really nice when they're all nice and tightly around there. And as you notice, I didn't, I fixed them so they weren't twisting either unless you'd want it to be like a twisty one. Now what I can do here is when I do this, I can kind of have my yarn tail from before 
in that a little bit just to kind of work it through if I want. And again, we're just trying to get it as tight as we can and hiding in that yarn a little bit. Okay, so we're back at the beginning. It's as tight as we can, we want to do it. This is our starting straggle. Got a little mess up there. Now this is where we can decide, are we going to go around it again and maybe another single or double crochet? I mean, it really doesn't matter because you're just putting a towel through this part. But again, if you want it more decorative or to be out more, you can. You can go right around and do a double crochet in all these, or you can just leave it as a single crochet. And now you start working the, <clears throat> excuse me, go right into working the strap part, the, the part that's right here, working on this part. And that's what we're going to do. We're not going to worry about going around it again, because again, this is mainly just going to hold towels, but again, as a design, you can go around it again if you want. So once we're at the top part, I've got this straggle yarn left over, and I'm going to kind of use those two together. And what I want to do, excuse me, is I want to go into a stitch, grab the working yarns that are back there, and I'm just going to do a little bit of like a single crochet across a little bit. So we're going to do one, I'm going to go into a stitch. It's going to be a little tight because, again, we put them together as tight as we could. Okay. Two. Okay. Go in again. Three. Give me my yarn. All right. And what that's doing is creating a higher loop. This is what we're going to use to extend out. So we've done three. I'm going to go over a fourth one, and it's basically how wide you want that strap to be. So that was four over, as you can see, it's wider than and sticking up higher than the other ones. <clears throat> but you're going into this part, you're not going around the whole band. And that was about five, I believe. And we'll do one more. Six. So I went over about six stitches, and now what we're going to do is... I swear, I hear a frog in my house right now. Um, we've got the six across. Now we're going to flip this, turn it over to the back side, and work our way back across. And again, this is our straggle one that we can trim off in a minute. This is the back of the project. And we're going to do, the, do same the same thing working our way back. We're going to just do a single crochet going into the stitches that we just did. Remember, we have a second row there. You can see that. And we're just going to go into there and do the single crochet again, working our way back across those stitches. And what this is helping us do is to create the straps. It's all pretty much in one piece. And now it's starting to storm here. This is like the worst day ever. Okay, so we're just getting back to the beginning part. To the last stitch here. Okay. And that got us back over. We have a little more gap because I think I was supposed to put a stitch there, but it's not going to hurt it too much. You can always hide something in there if you have to. So that was the back of it. And then again, you're just going to flip it around to the front and work your way back and forth. This time, oh, I have to, this time what we're going to do is we're going to do two chains before we do it across. So again, we flipped it back over. This time what we need to do, because I did forget to do it on the other one, is you need to do a little single crochet before we work the next row up. So we're going to do one chain before we work up to the next one. And then we'll do one more. Now do your single crochet like you normally do. We've been doing, I should say. Trying to find your way in between those stitches. Started the wrong way. So that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna work your way back and forth, increasing it and making sure to do extra stitches on the edge. Because I forgot to do it on the edge, so that's gonna make. But see, that helps us create a little height. We're getting our strap build up. So again. We're going to flip it. We're going to do the same thing we did before. We do two chains before we start the next row. So one and two. Now go in and do our single crochet. And 
work your way across. Can you see the little stitches? I'm gonna see if I can get a little closer for you guys to see. Can you see how I'm going into the stitches right here? And I bring that yarn through. So you go into the stitch, grab the yarn, come back through, wrap it around, bring it through. And again, work your way over to the end. Sorry for going off camera there. Sometimes they like to fight me a little bit I'm going into the stitches. And I'm just going to keep it as single crochet going up. You can decide to do double crochet. And if you need to, I do have some um, videos about like a double crochet border, which is similar to what you're doing. But each time you work a row up, make sure you do two chains if you're only doing the single crochet. And it'll make a nice little strap, as you can see. I know the color might be a little off. Let me back up. Looks better when it's further away. But we're going to work on the strap. Now with the strap, it's going to be how long you need it to go around. Because you got to keep in mind that yarn does have a little give to it. And the more that a towel's hanging off of it, it's going to end up stretching your yarn out. So this one was pretty, I mean, almost a hand, if you say, about my hand light width. But again, it depends on the handle that you have that you plan on putting it around. But I would say you're definitely going to want it to be four or five inches around to go around the um, handle and then a quick little button hole on it. But again, you've got to keep in mind that there is a little give. So the longer a towel's on it, it's going to weigh down the yarn. It's going to stretch this out. So do it a little less, do the length a little shorter than what you were originally planning. And that should help give or take the thing. And again, pick up a nice button. I would recommend a button, honestly, that has really big holes. If you see that, they're, they're big enough that I can get the yarn through with a crochet hook and I don't have to worry about necessarily sewing them. All I did was put the, cro the yarn through and then tied it pretty much through the project, as you can see. So that's a very simple way to add a button. And like I said, the holes are big enough that would really help you out. Or if you have even crochet hooks that are really skinny that you can get in there, that'll help you get the yarn through. So again, we've already, <clears throat> we're getting ready to flip it the next way because we finished this row. So we'll flip it and we're just going to keep this process going until we get at the length we want. And then I'll show you how I added the buttonhole. Now, once you get to the last row that you want to do before you end up, like as you can see, I'm going to be able to get this around a handle of a stove or wherever else I might want it to be. Now I've done my last single crochet row over and again, it's not going to be perfect. You can kind of give it a little stretch to kind of get it the shape you want. And now we have to do the buttonhole. I just picked up from my button collection a random a button. The reason I picked this one is the holes are big enough and I have a really super skinny, let me see, what is this? 10 mm one, I mean it's really skinny and it will actually go through the holes so I can attach the yarn or the string and attach the button onto the project wherever I need it to be. So the, now we want to do the buttonhole. So if you look at the very end, one second here, you look at the very end, we have to work our way back. Well, instead of doing our single crochet, we're just going to do a bunch of single crochets right off this one. We're just going to keep doing probably five or six. It depends on how big it looks once I get going. So we're going to do one, keep going, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we can bring this over. And again, you can kind of see that's going to be our buttonhole when we bring it over. So then we go over here into our end part. Let me see if I can zoom in here for you to see. We're going to go over here because we've got our six loops here. We're going to go over to the last one we have here, put our crochet hook in it, grab our working yarn to come through and go through there and then go through that hook we have on there. And that's going to help secure it to the project itself. I hope you saw that. That will help you hook right onto the project. Now go ahead and cut some of your yarn. Give yourself a tail about five to six inches. And then what you're going to do is you're going to bring that work last tail through. And this is going to kind of help bind it off. And then I usually like to let me see, find which side is the front. Because I have this straggle from before, I know this is the back of the project. So I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to pick a random stitch. And I'm going to bring that working yarn, the, the tail that's left over, back through that. And then back through it again. And 
my yarn is kind of older yarn so and then kind of give it a tug and that'll let you know whether or not it's going to come off and if you want to you can even do a regular little knot in it as well making sure it's as tight to that project as you can then go ahead and trim that and as you see that becomes our buttonhole now we have to add that again this string lets me know what's the front and the back of the product. So as you can see, with having that string, it's actually helping me know this is the back of the project and this is the front. So then we need to position the button. And again, I'm going to put the button as low as I can because this will be our loop to go around the thing. And it's the pretty big button. I know it's a little misproportioned for this project, but that's okay for right now. Again, you're going to do whatever size button you want to do and you can position it. I mean, this one's going to be a little lower, so it's going to cut off some of the circle or I could do it higher so you see the full circle and then this would come around so it's just a matter of where you want to place it and when you're ready just cut yourself some of that working yarn you just used again if your the hole is big enough to put the yarn through as you can see this hole is pretty big you can see the project before it and I've got a really skinny crochet hook so all I have to do is come up through the pro through the then grab my working yarn, the yarn I want to put through and bring one side through. Okay, and then what I want to do is go to this other side and bring that side through. Oops, that one kind of got. Okay, and then what that does is that it has already through these sides. Now I just have to have it go where I want in the, pos the position. I want it to kind of be about here. Again, it's going to block off some of the circle. And then so what I need to do is figure out where I want it to come through. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to poke a hole in. I'm going to grab one of the strings I have behind. And I'm going to pull that through. And if you need to, you can actually switch your crochet hook up to the bigger one now that you don't need the skinny one. And this might work a little easier. Pull that through. Now go ahead over next to it and do the same thing. And what you'll be able to do before you tie it off, just make sure it's positioned roughly where you want it and turn it over. And you see we got our straggles. We even got the little straggler there. And you're just going to tie it. This way you're not necessarily sewing. It's a very simple way to add a button again if the buttonholes are big enough. Just give yourself two or three knots. Go ahead and trim that. Again, flatten all that out, turn it over, and when it wants to go through, just go right around the button, and it's already attached. Any stragglers you have, you can try to hide them, but that's all it is through, and then when you want to take it off, all you have to do is find your buttonhole, simply take it off. So that is a simple, very simple dish towel holder.